Welcome to Groups, guys. As we get going today, one of the things that uh, stood out in this teaching is Jesus talks to us in Luke chapter 12 about everything that is, in, that, that is done in secret will come to the light. It'll be declared from the rooftops. And then Jesus says, I tell you, don't be afraid of those who can kill the body, but rather I will tell you who you should fear. Fear him who after your body is dead can throw you into hell. Yes, fear him. But then Jesus goes on and says, are not five sparrows sold for two, two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. This idea of fear God, but don't worry. He loves you. Fear him and hold him in awe and reverence, but he loves you. He is for you. And when we look at our lives and understand that we, we kind of use the framework this week of unpacking our Christian life as it were on a stage or in the theater context. And for you and I, we come to the point where the responsibility lifts from your shoulders to know exactly what to say. The responsibility for us is to be close to God, listening to him, listening to to Jesus, listening to the word of God speak, listening to the prompt of the Spirit. We are listening to it so that we may do what the director wants. Really, that's the end of the story in this. The director sees the beginning from the end. He knows all the scenes, all the movements, and he has a vision in his head for what's going to happen. God is the great director of all things. He wants a certain outcome, and he's inviting you and I to participate with him in that glorious outcome. Fear him because he's almighty God, but trust him because he loves you. And and I love the closing closing line of this teaching, that um, not only is um, is he able to remove you from the stage, but he actually will use anything he wants to declare his story. But how wonderful it is that he still chooses you and he chooses to know you and to let you tell the story that he has written in his very blood. He wrote the story with the blood of Christ and he chose you to declare it. So when we look at our life, we are not looking to wear these religious masks that look good. I don't want you to look good. I want you to be good. I want you to be made into the image of Christ. I want to be made into the image of Christ. And that's the high calling of the church. To know that there is a director who calls us to obedience that sometimes makes no sense to us, but it makes perfect sense to him who sees big. And that's our invitation today. As we look into this teaching, we have to know that there is a God who loves us, who is to be listened to, to be obeyed, and even when you have no words, remember that the Spirit of God will give you words to speak. When the audience quits cheering for you in life, there is one who we realize has always been on our side, the director. And so we don't do things for everybody else's approval. We do it for the approval of the one who we should fear. We don't do it for the approval of the audiences in our lives. We do it for the approval of the one whom we fear and know loves us. I hope you enjoy your time in groups as we dive into the questions. Hey kids, welcome to groups. Here's your first question. Have you ever heard the word hypocrisy before? Question number two, did you actually know that the word hypocrisy comes from a theater word? So theater, like the people, the actors, the stage workers, in theaters in Jesus' day, the Greeks loved theater. The word hypocrisy comes from a theater word in Jesus' day. It was what they called the actors who wore big masks, these great big masks, to change their character on stage. Jesus said to be careful not to pretend to be someone who you're not. Why do you think he warned his disciples of this? Question three, God made you and he loves you and he made you for a special purpose. 
to follow him and to tell others about him, to make his glory known. We are always supposed to be thinking about what he thinks of us, not what other people think of us. Is that hard for you to do? All right, kids, have a great time. Whatever you do next, I hope you have fun. And if you make a mess, you should probably help clean it up. You don't want your friends to have to stay up late doing that. But if you don't make a mess, you weren't really being kids. So go make a mess and then clean it up. Have fun. All right, adults, here we go. For you, question one, how would you define hypocrisy? All right, adults, uh, question number two. Do you think what you do and you say in the dark, in the secret places, the hidden things you do, do you think that it is hidden permanently? Question three, if the people in your life are... The audience, the the people in your life are the audience. Who are your biggest fans and who are your biggest critics? Why do you think in verse 5 it tells us to fear and then in verse 7 it says don't be afraid? A director knows the whole story, and he purposely chooses people for each part. Do you think God purposefully made and chose you for a certain role within the church? And by this word, we mean both the foundry and the church in a global sense. Verse 11 and 12 tell us, that we should not worry about what to say, that the Holy Spirit will give us the words we need in the moment. Have you ever experienced this happening in your life? And if you have, please take time and tell your group about it. All right, so our group's community question this week is, what is the Foundry's kind of stance or position regarding same-sex attraction and homosexuality? This is a big question for the church to answer, and the Foundry has a very clear understanding and belief that connects our theology up here to the heart and the ministry of reaching real people. We believe this, what comes natural isn't always best. I'm not here to debate with people whether or not they are same-sex attracted and have always been. I would say many of the people I know who struggle with same-sex attraction have been that way since they were young. It comes naturally. But what came naturally to me when I was young, in my teens and early 20s, was not healthy or good. It wasn't honoring God, and it was actually against Scripture. And so is same-sex attraction. It is not something that is biblically aligned and faithful. I don't believe that we can be in dysfunctional sexual lifestyles and be being transformed. We can't willfully be disobeying God in the intimate areas of our life. I mean, think about this week's teaching, the things in the dark, the secret places. We can't have secret sexual dalliances, whether they be hetero or homosexual, and think that it doesn't affect our whole being, and our transformation into Christ's image. So what comes natural isn't always best. We call people not to ask Jesus to be made into their image and say, Jesus, will you affirm that I am naturally same-sex attracted and be like me? No. We say, come as you are and meet God on his terms, not ours. And his terms are this, become and be made into the image of Christ. And Christ, through the word of God, has revealed that God's intention for human sexuality is one man, one woman, in the bonds of a monogamous marriage. So that means this. 
for all you heterosexual people out there who have sexually dysfunctional things going on, you are participant in the same dysfunction as people who have same-sex attraction. Let's not make it just one thing. Any kind of sexual dysfunction goes against the healthy life of a transformed Christian becoming like Christ. There are things in us that need to die to Christ to fully live in him. And our sexuality is one of them. When it comes to our sexuality, that's not all that we are. We're not just sexual beings. So when a culture tries to define you based on your attraction, you know, and it says, well, you know, you're gay, and that's the entirety of your person. That's a lie. That's a lie. Your sexual attractions are part of who you are, and if they're broken, they have to be remade by the power of the Holy Spirit in you, the Spirit of God transforming that. But it's not all that you are, and it's a lie of the culture to tell us that we can identify as other things and different, when, when it's, our sexuality is really a part of who we are, but it's not, the, it's not even close to the entirety. You're a whole person made in the image of God for the purposes of God, and part of the purposes of God in many of our lives is a healthy sexual life in marriage. But it's not the entirety of it. Ask any married couple. It's not the entirety of their marriage. That would be weird. That would be weird. Don't be defined by such a narrow scope on, on what, your, what your orientation is. It matters because we act that out, and it needs to be transformed if that is broken. But your identity is much larger than your, than your well, than your sexual orientation. But if it becomes your whole identity, then you know something is very broken. If you are primarily defined by your orientation and different things like that, you can know that that's a great trigger to see that something is off in your identity right now. And Satan has deceived you to think that's who you are. You're much more. You're a human being made for the purposes of God and the glory of God to be in a relationship with God. So when it comes to same-sex attraction, we will not be party to or participate in same-sex marriages. Letting people who are active, same-sex attracted um, members of that community lead or take leadership roles within our church. That will not be happening. But in the same measure, if you're a leader in this church and we find that there are unhealthy sexual practices in your life, you will also be removed from leadership because it's not just a homosexual issue. It's a human sexuality issue. We have to have a bigger conversation. So our stance is very clear, are very clear. And we know that there's real people involved, real lives, real people who love each other that have to part ways because we know that in the end that lifestyle doesn't honor God. So when we talk about this, we do so with the utmost care because it's very hard for people involved to leave relationships that for them have been a large part of their identity. And we want to be a church that is present as they have to follow God in mission, not us, and be transformed into the image of Christ. They should have a community they could connect to and probably grieve and share that loss with and grow into the image of Christ and know that God is in the business of restoring broken sexual ethics with healed, whole sexual ethics. Because don't forget, God created human sexuality. Its purpose, pleasurable, is also purposeful. And God is is calling us, the church, to love people and invite them. Come as you are. Meet God on his terms, not ours. So we will not push people out the doors who are same-sex attracted, who are, who are actually, maybe we have some people who come here and they are, they are same-sex couples. And we don't push them out the door. We invite them. Come as you are. Meet God on his terms, not ours. And know this, that if you're in a broken sexual ethic, God will require it of you at some point, hetero and homosexual. He really doesn't differentiate. He wants sexual brokenness healed so that we can be made into the image of him who we love, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to talk more about this, I'd be happy to talk with you. Please know the Foundry Church is an Orthodox church that believes one man, one woman. And that means one man, 
with one woman, and one woman with one man, there is no dalliances outside of the marriage in any way. That is the, the ethic that we uphold, and that is the healthy hu- expression of human sexuality that doesn't harm or hurt the people involved. So, again, any questions, please feel free to reach out. I hope we've made this clear because the Foundry Church knows in a culture that wants to redefine sexuality, scriptures, ethic, doesn't change, and we won't be adopting the culture, the culture's view on human sexuality. Thanks for being in groups today. I hope you found this time wonderful with your friends and your new relationships growing in the Foundry Church and in the Word of God, in the community of God. It is awesome to know that so many of you in this church are digging into the Word of God. Don't forget, stay in those devotionals, stay in your Lent devotion and growing into the Word of God personally, corporately at with us on uh, maybe Thursdays at the message or one of our five services on Sundays or Monday or Tuesday night, wherever you're growing in the Word of God, we just know this. Stay Stay in it, stay in the community of God, and stay in your groups. Grow together into the image of him who called you to himself. Have a great week. Bless you. Thanks for being a part of our groups.